Hi, Michelle. All right, I'm gonna do your soul rebirth journey now. Um, this will be an interesting one. So you shared several different things with me. One thing you shared was that um, you experienced an Ivan channeling with Metatron. And there was an indication that you need to clear seven reptilian lifetimes. This will help in regards to addiction and depression, the subconscious guilt that causes binges of alcohol, okay, and invites negative entities and could potentially inspire suicide, societal thoughts. Let's see. Um, it was indicated you have a silver Palladian lifetime with a lot of mischief. And so it sort of inspires sort of addictive personality behaviors. You've had some challenges with relationships, which is really heartbreaking, you know. We all want to have a really loving, balanced relationship. And you have ha have been through three marriages, and none of them were right. So I'm taking everything in that you've shared. I mean, you really want to experience real balance and grounding sensations. You feel that there's a lot of dark pockets that need transforming, is what you say. So, I'm ready for you. <laughs> I'm ready. I'm just going to relax and get started. The instantaneous beginning is, I touch, what is you? What is also a black button-down shirt with a collar? And then I also hear Silver Palladian Lifetime. I don't know much about Silver Palladians, but... There is a massive angel here immediately. The wings are really interesting. They're kind of... They're not shaped where they go outward. They're sort of bent like an M. Um, just like that. This dress is... They're saying it's not an angel. The dress is a teal, like a teal green color. It's more green than blue. Totally beautiful. There is a sort of blonde, or like white blonde hair is what it looks like, or silvery hair. It's a female, but maybe male. I mean, this is a dress, so I'm, well, I'm looking. I'm inspecting the appearance. It's almost like anime. <laughs> I wouldn't be, I, I wish I could paint. I would totally paint this picture. I mean, there's clouds everywhere. There's a lot of light coming in. This is the centerpiece. This entity with these M style, size, style wings like that. Sort of this greenish teal sort of dress. Long whitish colored hair. And the face is an oval shape. And the skin color isn't particularly pure white, and it's sort of, I don't know, like an olive color, maybe? I don't know what to make of it. There's definitely wind or energy. It's just a reflection of power or emphasis. I'm expecting to see a storm brewing. That's how this feels. I mean, it feels like this entity could create a hurricane. But smile at the same time. And sort of rejoice in the gift of power through destruction. Not necessarily a demonic force, but just the joy of destructive power. The joy of the thunder and the lightning. The joy of the scary storm. The joy of that experience. They're saying I'm correctly identifying the energy. There's something that they are pointing to me. They want to show me. It's written on a book here. She clearly, she keeps, she, I mean, the, there's some, there's a reason why I, I mean, you would think this is a she, but there's a reason why there feels to be a he sort of energy reflection as well. I mean, it could be a man with really long hair that just happens, this outfit just happens to be a dress. I mean, the Scottish kilts, is that necessarily worn by a woman? <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> but there's no facial hair or anything. I'm just watching. I'm supposed to acknowledge there's some sort of stick with a sort of crystal piece on the end. 
It, it this this is being used as a pointer stick as it in, sort of identifies something written on a book. It's almost like a registry or something. There's a need to. I mean, I need to just slow down. I mean, there's so many things that I just. I'm feeling a lot of energy fluctuations. I'm trying to look at the book. I'm inspecting this entity. I'm trying to make sense. If it's not an angel, then what is it? I'm trying to feel out lower level spaces. I'm sensing myself bottoming out or dropping out. Like I want to go lower, but I'm not allowed to go lower yet. I'm supposed to stay here. So I'm just waiting. <laughs> Super beautiful, a really warm sunlight of energy just sort of entered the scene. There's no f reflection of an anything related to this. It would just be like looking at a sun just instantly appears and then light shining. Sunlight, yellow light. But it's sort of an energy vibration and it feels warm. It's joyful. It's happy. It feels like I want to laugh. Um, makes you feel like a child. So you feel freedom is what it feels like. It's just, I'm trying to study this. I'm trying to make sense of it. And then this sun just, it's like, oh, I don't, I just want to feel that. That's all I want to know about. <laughs> I want to know more about that. They're showing me this yellow sun is becoming some sort of a pool of water. But they're saying it is reflected off of water, and so the water is yellow. It's like, okay, you showing me a pool of pee. <laughs> Something funny going on here. That's my joke to them, but they're not laughing at it. <laughs> it's like, don't eat the yellow snow. Don't, you know, swim in the yellow water. <laughs> they're being serious here, though. I'm not being serious. Okay, am I being serious? They, again, are indicating that the sunlight is reflecting off of the water. <laughs> so, now we know. Okay. <laughs> I'm taking, I'm telling them I'm taking this seriously. And I'm walking over to this pool of water. I'm looking into it. I am choosing to honor it as a sacred reflection. And even gift. There is something very beautiful about when the sunlight and the water meet together and then the water spar sparkles, you know. But in this case, the water is absolutely just yellow. I mean, it's like somebody took a paintbrush and painted over blue water yellow. But it's definitely the, a reflective experience when I look at it as well. They're, they're asking me if I want to jump into it, and again, I'm like... There's this urine thing going on in my head, and I don't know about that right now. <laughs> I'm trying to get serious about it. I'm serious. I swear to God, I'm serious. But this this is jarring me. <laughs> it's all part of the wisdom. There's there's. <laughs> They aren't upset with me. There's, they know what is going on. They already knew. They already knew this was going to do this to me, you know? And so they're kind of smiling at me now. Although they, were, they really need me to acknowledge the seriousness of it, too. So, there's, a man, there's a man here, absolutely clearly. And he... I mean, there's something about an anime feel to this kind of thing. But he's got white hair and it sort of wisps out like this. It's not long. It probably comes down to here. Totally handsome. And it's like white wisp hair out like that. And his reflection, I mean, he's in white light. So he's glowing white. But I can see the outline of mouth, nose, eyes, that sort of thing. Face, neck, and his shoulders. He's showing me a bow and arrow even very quickly shooting bow and arrow. Another girl, this is like animation or something. This other girl, she's quite like a cat or something, has a, even a big furry tail, and she has white hair, and she's almost, I mean, I don't know, like if I could, if I was an animation artist or something, I mean, this would be a totally cool, like, kids type of 
that they don't want me to intertwine it with it being they're wanting me to indicate this fantasy world is a real world and not to intertwine it with um make believe or anything of that kind they are wanting me to identify it as a real world and so this sort of nose piece kind of comes out like this i mean they look real they look totally real but they're surreal right and this sort of fox type of, I mean, the tail is really big and bushy and the color of the fur is brown. But there's some white, um, like a white sort of, I don't know, uh, M shape sort of all the way around the tail uh, towards the tip. And then also some white sort of fur up here and brown and a really brown nose at the end. And a bow and arrow as well. And it's also in sort of a foresty, not like, why do I describe this type, type of forest? There's kind of a, a sort of, a very short cliff, like five foot tall, and there's rocks and stuff. And you could say it's going downward, but it feels sort of, I mean, there's a tree up here. This bow and arrow fox creature is right up here on this cliffside, and then there's trees and stuff, and rocks, and there's butterflies. I honestly feel free. <laughs> I feel excitement. I mean, I'm telling you, the feeling is sort of like... You ever notice how, like in The Hobbit, nobody really seems... Like, there's moments of fear, like with the dwarves, for instance. They're like, they're just ready to go get them. They don't care about what, what the effect of the violence is. They just, they have a belief they're gonna go after it, and that's that. This sort of creature is just total freedom. It knows what it is, it knows what it wants, it knows what its purpose is. Total freedom to express itself, uses bow and arrow very well. It just, there's something about this that is just total, it's not afraid of anything. Not afraid of death, not afraid of har physical harm. It is just so confident and courageous even, but yet so grounded and down to earth you would not see this creature as being like a warrior or anything. It just happens to be out in the woods with its bow and arrow, maybe hunting or something. But it's, it's like, it's the animal hunting an animal? Like, that's what I mean. I'm just analyzing the whole scene. There's a snake in this. So, a couple of things just happened here. They're telling me that we are looking at this as a real-life story, okay? Real life. So that is as far as it goes. They want me to slice the butter, and this is, this is it. This is how we're going to look at the scene. And now, as we look at the scene, I am to close my eyes and then start telling you everything I see as it comes, okay? There's a snake in this sort of... On the cliff, it, there's some sort of dirt, and it kind of comes down. And the dirt down here is sort of like like play-doh or something and there's a snake sort of squiggling around in there i see this fox i don't know what else to call it but a fox sort of creature brown fox i actually take the bow and then straight looking straight at the snake is totally in motion but it's sort of swirling around like that there's a real excitement in the heart to to aim correctly and then hit the snake exactly and that sort of force of energy like that first entity with this sort of greenish blue sort of teal dress the force of excitement the force of destructive energy the force i mean is totally exciting and there's nothing wrong with it it's beautiful right it's beautiful how many people love the first thunderstorm in spring and summer or whatever i mean it's exciting it's beautiful some people chase tornadoes like they they love it they get excited by it some people are storm chasers some you know people some people just really thrive in that sort of high sort of adrenaline but it's the creation of it the creation of the energy and it's so is so revived so thriving this female male dress and see i don't know what to call it um that is also the excitement this fox is feeling right now it just feels the power of choice but choice through a destructive behavior but the destructive behavior isn't evil it is actually nurturing the spirit which has a spirit that thrives in experiences like this so they're saying in, so it is not evil to kill the snake with a bow and arrow and I'm saying, I, 
the sensation of evil, it is not a deranged experience. Shooting the snake is not out of, I hate the snake. It is not out of the sensation of, I want to m ruin that snake's life. I want to make that snake's life miserable. It is actually out of the experience of conquering the skill of but weaponry. Um, it's out of the experience of, this is a gift to, to me. And I see it, and now I shoot it with my bow and arrow. That is, that is balanced. It's totally balanced. There's nothing ill-flavored about that balanced sensation. It's, you know, people really love the experience of hunting, you know? Is it evil? I mean, Native Americans were very respectful to animals that they had hunted and killed. And so, it's not evil. It just depends on how you, you're approaching the experience, right? There's nothing evil about the way the fox is approaching the experience. But the fox now is taking the arrow and the bow, putting the arrow back and putting the bow sort of on its shoulder and is smiling at me and saying, it is not for me today. And actually feels joy in that decision and is turning away from this cliffside and going on to do other things. There's joy in the forest. There's joy in the experience. There's joy from the snake. The snake who was just doing, I mean, the snake is just rolling, it's just going in a circle. It's just like chasing its tail and like going in and out of this Play-Doh substance, which is liquidy enough. It's like thick, thicker sand. I don't know. It's just playing in the sand or something. But it's not like it's playing. It's working or something like that. It feels like it's working. But it's, the whole scene is very... It's alive, like nature is alive, you know? It's like the ducks communicate with the water, communicate with the fish, communicate with the bugs, communicate with the leaves of the trees, communicate with... And everything is at the right time and in the right place and in perfect balance and communication with each other. Even in the decisions that are made. Like this, this fox creature with a consciousness could be a consciousness associated with the human consciousness because it, it sees, it participates in living, it thinks about its choices... It, it has more of a dynamic of a consciousness. And so, it, but it chooses and it is happy with its choices, whether it chooses to kill the snake or whether it chooses it is not for this experience today. It is happy no matter what it chooses. They're saying, are you happy no matter what you choose? This is what they're saying. That's all they're saying. They're sharing a gift. It is a red ball, and I'm giving it to you. It's literally like a little miniature apple or something. You're chewing, you're taking a bite of it. Curious to see what you think of the flavor. Ah, uh, there's something changing about this scene here. I see you. This is not a good scene here. Um, <laughs> it's not a good scene just by the appearance of it, but they're saying it is a very beautiful scene. So now I'm going to describe this beautiful scene for you, okay? So you, as you're, it's almost like you have multiple arms, like three on either side, and they're sort of chained up against two posts, and so you're literally just chained to two posts. Behind you, so we are looking into each other's eyes, I hand you this. How do you have a hand to even put it in your mouth? So you actually do have a hand to put it in your mouth, you take a bite of it, and as you take a bite, you start to pull backwards, and I see that you're um, shackled to two posts. Now we have what is a massive, looks like a, like straight out of Aliens, the giant female alien with a and all the slime, you know? That's right behind you. That's the beautiful scene. I just seem to feel happy and joyful in the experience. I don't feel fear or concern at all. In fact, I seem to know exactly why this is what it is and exactly what to do here. I'm dancing and I'm singing. And that is all I am inspired to do. And this is enough. Sometimes joy is all it takes to transform the experience of life. Life that for one human mind would say, Oh boy, that's not looking good. 
But then when you just choose to say all there is is a reason to whistle and to skip and to just be happy, now where is the power of this image? The power of the image is only in what you choose to see within it. And so the image can transform when the only thing we choose to see is a gift of sharing one a piece of fruit and then the gift of singing and rejoicing in the experience of life. Now everything changes through this choice of vibration alone. I'm just laughing and giggling. I'm taking what is a tapestry or just very long piece of fabric and it's uh, it's got a f purple fabric but then it's also got this massive flame, white flame attached to it. And I'm just I'm just running around this room just whistling and giggling and just and it's floating, a floating trail of just this long purple tapestry and then flame. <laughs> That's what it looks like. It's like flying like a kite behind me, but not way up in the air, just sort of right straight behind me. You're crying. You're wondering why I am not unhinging you, unshackling you. I'm just giggling and laughing and continuing to share this joyful energy with you. I'm helping you to see something very important today, is what I say. Do you see it yet? So I'm waiting as I'm also just rejoicing. I'm not paying any mind to this creature, and it doesn't matter, right? So we're just sharing. As I share, there's more of um, a friction of energy from you because you really feel I need to be removing you from this and getting you out of here. So I'm being patient with you still. And he's saying, when you're ready to whistle, let me know. <laughs> I give you a gift again. It's an energy gift. It is the energy gift of, I know what to do now. Literally, I place it into your heart. I place it all around you. You seem to know what to do now. As you seem to know what to do, there's another energy or figure here. This one has its... I need to focus here for a minute. This is, it's getting heavier and harder to talk. This is like basically an angel sitting on top of your back while I also see wings coming out of your own back that just sort of appeared here. And then there's a massive sort of microphone coming down and then like you were to speak into it. The more time I, you're just getting more and more upset with me now. As you get upset, things just get really bad. This is us learning about you. You start to notice more of the bad things, and then they become even more of a calamity. And you're really wanting help um, to release from this. And I'm reminding you again, you the shackles will release the moment that you choose to see that they weren't there in the first place. To see that there is no entities that are going to cause you harm at all. And you're free. Don't you want to experience the freedom to stand on those clouds and be this sort of silvery white, I don't know what that is, but uh, this sort of energy that loves and thrives in the experience of the hurricane. So isn't that you? So I'm taking this image of energy and putting it into your heart so you can remember who and what you are. So you can balance with it correctly. You have a mischievous side, but you are not evil. You balance with it in a way that brings out the fire inside of you. In a way, though, that brings out the love, the love that is... is there's some balance to it. You're getting stronger and you're gaining an awareness of what to do, but you're not there yet. That's okay. It's important that I'm teaching you all this stuff in the spiritual. Your body's digesting it. Your mind is digesting it. Your emotions are digesting all of this wisdom I'm sharing. And it's helping you to know what to do the next time. And so that way you won't have to keep coming back or needing or sort of 
I need another healing or another reminder or whatever. I'm programming you to actually know what to do and instinctively know what to do. Which is to continue to let go of anything that is a reflection of not the whistling, not the freedom, not the fun, not the joy of just choosing and then being joyful in the choice. And just being joyful in the choice that is aligned with you, which isn't evil at all. It's beautiful, in fact. You're getting there, but you're you falling apart again. You get you sort of get it, and then you get overwhelmed. And when you get overwhelmed, more crap sort of enters the scene. You're inspired to push these two things down. You're gaining in strength. Inner strength. Inner confidence. Inspirate. You just know what to do. You're, you really are starting to get it now. It's good because it's getting really sort of overwhelming in here. It's like there's a lot of stuff and I'm having a hard time running around it and it's turning into an obstacle course. <laughs> because there's an energy sort of thing involved is sort of getting spinny around here as this sort of, you know, scary giant creature back there. And this sort of slime and then a an angel and then it's just, there's just a lot of calamity and sound and it's just like banging and clapping and screaming in my ears when I don't want to hear it and it's like ah hey let's calm down we're coming back to goose fraba <laughs> you can do it and you are doing it and so you're starting to actually take to it it's important that I'm patient with you and train you to do this here okay you are ripping the chains out you actually, you are breaking the chains, ripping the chains out. This pillars are p pushing down. There's activity of I am ready to release now by choice is what this is. And it's by powerful choice. Not, you know, it's by the powerful choice that is the hurricane choice, you know. The thunder and the lightning choice, not the... You know, the Goose Fraba style of just things just evaporate and disappear. Your style is a little bit more intense, a little bit more fiery in nature, a little stronger gust of wind. And that's your style. That's natural. We need all the mirrors <laughs> and an infinite reflection to make the awesome disco ball of oneness. You know, it's like we need that. We need you to be that for us. And, and you are that, and that is beautiful and celebrated about you. Do you feel that is a beautiful side of you? It is. <laughs> you are learning, and you are growing, and you are finding a means to be successful with what you put your heart into. Not what you put your thoughts and your mind, and, and when it rattles your cage, your emotions that are overwhelmed. This is what you put your heart into when it is balanced with who and what you are, and with your choices of what you want. You want to feel happy? Now choose happiness by letting go of anything that is not happiness, that is not a reflection of joy. It is learning, and learning is beautiful. There's nothing dark or evil about the experience of learning. I'm being patient with you. I see a woman, she's quite um, heavier set. She's got oh, too much makeup on. She's got a dress that is sort of older. I don't know what the date would be on this. Because there's something interesting about the pattern on her dress. I mean, it's not your typical sort of barmaid style, like 1700s or so. I don't, I mean, there's something silky about it, so it's kind of nice. And then it has some white 
piece that kind of comes here and then goes around. And then it has a darker patch and an orange patch and a red, red patch. And she's got sort of dark hair that's been in rollers and just, or maybe it's a wig or something. And the thing is, is there's a swaying sensation like this and there's there's a spinny sensation and there's lots and lots of sort of people in this room all doing this and they're all doing it together and it's just a spinny feeling but I see her and I see nobody else but her she's got a bus line all right <laughs> and is she likes to make it shake up and down just right <laughs> and she can put a beer down on the table and give it to you. <laughs> she's got a real hearty personality as well. She can make anybody laugh. It's just she's kind of boisterous, but kind of masculine in that style of her. Her way is kind of. She's definitely all woman, you know, but she's got kind of a hearty sort of masculine style about her. But it's refreshing, you know. There's something really easy to get along with her. Uh, she's kind of. She's kind of, um, she's rough around the edges, but she's definitely feminine. I mean, she may be a heavy set, but there's a, an attra there's an attractive appeal to her. There's an aggressive nature, all right. It ha I mean, she's, she is, she seems stronger than she sh I mean... Her motions are not delicate, um, and they're not afraid to put, you know, acknowledge that I am putting this beer down, I mean, it is a mug, or it is going down on the table in, in a way that it's like, you're gonna splash it, just chill out a little bit, but she's, she's hardy, and she's a little bit robust, even in the manner that she's just not, it's okay that she's not graceful, it's just her style, you know? She is who she is, but I'm telling you what, a woman of this facade has something else going on on the inside. There's something more to her than this. She's got to, she has to be rough for a reason. She's, there's something more to her. I guarantee if she had met the right man or was in the right circumstances, he would soften her up like warm butter. <laughs> this robust, serious, hardcore woman. Like, she's got a delicate side. She's a petite flower more than she leads on. <laughs> she just needs the right touch, you know? And it's, it's, I mean, the thing is, is she's beautiful, all right? And the way, there's something about the way she was molded into being who and what she is she is no, doing exactly as she understands how she should be, you know? But there's something about her inner heart, uh, some inner part of her, that she hides a lot because she has this masculine sort of facade. It's, it's her personality, but there's more to it than that. There's something far deeper within her. And she has not been touched with real love ever before. That is what this means to me. And I'm talking to my spirit guides about this. Thing is, is men, the men, men would, could manhandle her, right? Because they just, you know what, she's just, I don't know how to describe this. Um, she'll do it because it's her role or whatever, but there is nothing, they don't take her seriously as a woman, you know? They kind of take her as one of the guys with a vagina, in a way. And so that's really heartbreaking because she wants, she wants to have an affectionate experience. She really does. But she, because her style keeps enforcing her to ignore what her true deepest heart needs are. And she just keeps ignoring because her role, of her role, you know? And then she just... You know, it, it gets her the attention or the appeal that, that feels comfortable for her. And, and, but it does not really give her that sort of very real and raw intimacy that this woman needs. She needs to be seen as 
a delicate, beautiful, feminine design, you know? Even a hardy woman can rejoice in that if she allows her heart to be touched, you know? So I just, I mean, I'm just seeing men that I, they don't... I'm really sad about this. I'm really sad about this scene. I get her style. I get her personality. She's really easy to get along with. The reality is she's not being true to her own heart and her own feminine needs and true to who and what she is. And so there's basically three men here. One is on one side of the table, one on the other, and one is underneath the table. I mean, the one that's underneath the table is like, yee, uh, I'm going to sneak up on her. I mean, he's just, it's like, I would just, they're like dogs, you know? That's the way they're just like, bleh, they're like dogs. I just, I mean, you're a human being for God's sake. Uh, just, the, they, they each have a different sort of flavor. I'm still trying to make out the other two are sort of in the shadows. This one under the table is literally like a puppy dog, kind of, but kind of a creepy puppy dog. <laughs> The, it's just not real love, you know? I am stalling out the scene, and I'm just touching her. I am looking at her. I'm talking to her about who and what she truly is, about her true feelings on the inside. Showing her about love. I'm asking her if she knows what I'm talking about. If she chooses to feel what I'm talking about. As I talk to her, she looks at these two men and the table. I mean, their skin is changing. They're not the men you think they are. I mean, this one, uh, the only way I could just say is this one looks demonic or reptilian or I just, I don't know if that's just sharing his you know, the real... That's all I'm going to say. The other one is sort of like... I don't know how to describe it. Um, skeletal, but not skeletal. It's got sort of a purple, darker, sort of odd skin around it. Um, there's some red to this skin. There's some sort of bloodiness to it. It just... I mean, demonic about it. Scenes are going really fast now. As we're looking at the the table, and what's under the table, everything. We're looking at the men, we're looking at the scene. She... I see so many different things happening. In one scene, she has a hat on, and she's, she looks far better. I mean... She looks like an improved, like a higher class lady, even in a velvet black gown. I mean, she's robust, but there's a beauty to her. And this, so that's one scene. That's all. I, as, as I'm also sort of looking at her, she has her hat on like she wants to leave. She's sort of, I mean, she's not, there's something higher class about her, but she's hanging out in the gutter. I don't, that's why it's like, is she serving beers? Is she own the bar? I don't. All I know is that she's here and that men, she... <sighs> she she can be taken into a room and wham bam thank you ma'am style and, and she doesn't really care and they don't really care. It's, but yet she cares on the inside. I don't know why she's going to these places. They're asking me if I think she is an upper-class lady that happens to have sort of a um, kind of a weird side to her <laughs> where she kind of sneaks into places where she doesn't belong because she enjoys that nightlife feel. 
And I was saying, well, all I know is she's dressed in a very unique way. And there's something about the silky gown and these really nice hats she wears. And the fact that her hair is perfectly curled like it is. She even has a black mole. And I mean, there's something about that. I mean, it's sort of overly makeup though. Like really red, sort of dark red on lipstick. And lot too, maybe too much powder or something. And then rosy cheeks and then a mole here. There's something over... I mean, I don't... But there's definitely a feel of she gets along with these guys very well, and that's good enough. But there's a sexual romping flavor to all this, and it's totally not warm or nurturing at all. And I'm trying to help her with this. I mean, she definitely has... I'm examining... I'm just examining all of her emotions. So when I see these scenes, I describe everything I see while I'm simultaneously binging off a million different, like I'm seeing the infinite reflection, trying to analyze through um, sending in signals into the image itself in order to see what bounces back related to her emotions, what she's thinking, what she's feeling, what her personality is, what her behavior is like. And so I'm speaking to as I'm doing like all of this stuff. So I'm making sense of it. <laughs> They're asking me what do I like about her. I say I want her to be honest. They're asking me how many people on this earth do you think aren't, you know, are, are share a, a sort of a personality and a flair of their style, but deep down are different than that. How many people do you think are, are like this? And I'm saying a lot of people. Because we don't really have, a, I mean, I don't know how we, I don't know how you share that real, the real nature of yourself in a world that we live in. It's kind of a survival instinct to to align with a certain behavior or way of being in order to to create the right version of joy for yourself, you know? And they're asking if I think that is acceptable behavior. Saying, oh man, this is really deep conversation, you know? They're saying it's always better to be who and what you are on the inside. What do you have to be ashamed of? What do you have to be... The, why is that not good enough? Why is it not good enough? Now, when we bring out her true nature, she's quite a lot softer. She feels more meaning in the world around her. She has a robust joy for the chaos experiences, which is okay. But she, she lets that be too much of her identity and not creating the right balance with the other side of her reflection, which is softer too. They're saying that the spiritual healing work is helping to create a right balance for your energy style. This is important. It's important that we acknowledge that you are very warm on the inside and then really drawing that out naturally. So your exciting sort of probably like, you know, fast cars and, you know, it just something about the adrenaline rush sort of style of being, I mean, I don't know what fits into there specifically, but there's clearly imagery here about the joy of that sort of, experience, right? But there's also imagery here that we have to create, pull out that real warmth and loving nourishment from deep within in order to create the balance. So we have sort of the chaos and the love, like like the infinite universe. You have life, you have death. Death is very short-lived. This sort of robust, hearty style is you, but you are more than just that. And you need to honor that other part of you. You don't have to be that all the time. You clearly like to shake things up and that's good. 
but you can't just completely hide it way down there and never let it share itself with the world because you're not this part of your inner voice, your soul, your identity has to be nurtured too. I'm just waiting for the next thing. Again, it is a scene where I'm talking to you and asking you what you choose. Because what is comfortable for her is what makes sense and the way she's always been. And it kind of creates like a brick wall that hides the real depth of her. That other side of her that is softer is she doesn't want anybody to know about. <laughs> and the thing is, is it's sort of a resistance. Like, I don't know if I... I don't know how to be that or I'm used to this and this is my version of joy and what I understand joy to be. And I'm saying, but what is joy when you're not being ex who the, the being the version of that is the depths of you? <laughs> we are sp so before I leave this scene, she we are in concentration fo talking and interacting about this whole thing we've just been talking about, all right? So now we have two scenes here where we're learning how to reprogram the behavior, re-examine what is the self, right? And what the self chooses and how to align with true joy and how to, I mean, all of that is, we got two scenes. So um, now these scenes are still in existence here as there's also sort of a, a record or something going spinning around like that. It's, I'm watching it. I mean, there's a, one of those pieces that come out and then there's like an old record player. I mean, it's not like the 80s or the 70s or... I mean, it's older, like Victorian record player. I don't even know when they first made these, but it's got it's got a, lo a long... I mean, it's got a, a piece on it, so it projects the sound. And there's definitely a circular thing going around on here. I mean, maybe that was like the early 1900s or something. I don't know. something charming about it something charming about the way I feel when this music is playing I am a female wearing a very attractive red dress there's a man here there's definitely a romantic experience going on I mean there is truly a romantic experience going on here her hair is in a bun, but it's kind of lower, and it, there's something very beautiful about the way that she has it pulled back. I mean, I don't know how she would have accomplished this. It's quite beautiful, and yet simple, too. Her hair is sort of a dark brown with some red, reddish sort of color to it, but it's more brown than red. And she's got, I mean, there's something maybe Spanish about it. I don't, she's very beautiful. Very attractive. And this man's handsome too. There's some laughter as they're also interacting in a sexual way. As they're like removing clothing. There's, there's romance, but there's joy as well. Just really, it's, it's real. I mean, they're not... They're having fun with each other in a way that is very real. It's not... It's just real love, you know? He touches her heart, is what they say. Can you allow a man to touch your heart like he did? That's what they say. As I say that, your heart opens up more. You start to breathe in the sound of this song that was playing at this time. I mean, it's a full on like a World War II scene or something.
I mean, there's something very much so like a World War II here. I'm starting to make out more of this, the details, and they're showing me scenes of, of soldiers marching on what would be kind of a gloomy, rainy day. Well, there, I mean, this is quite ritzy. She is very fancy. I mean, there's something seriously like Nazi flavor about it. I mean, they are celebrating the riches of life. No doubt about it. They're celebrating the riches of life, and it doesn't, it feels very much so like not many people are celebrating the riches of life right now, but they are. And it's quite clear that she's not Spanish at all. <laughs> she has white, you know, she's Caucasian looking, she has beautiful hair. And she even wears fur coats. I mean, they're having the finest wines, the finest of everything, the finest music. I mean, they, their furnishings are very fine. And there's something quite, as I'm getting to experience this, I'm also getting to experience what is real love, right? But there's something tainted about it because there's something dark about it. why everything is just, they're just in such an upper class way and it's i'm exploring it some more i mean they're showing me planes dropping bombs on whole cities i mean people screaming in terror concentration camps there's they're showing me so much pain and misery on one side of a screen while these two are in quite a slumber and quite a joyful romantic experience, passionate, sexual, loving experience. I mean, it's real, it's true love, but there's something also odd about it. Hi, there's something turning. The tides are changing here with this thing. It's almost as if she thought it was one thing and then now it's changing. I don't know for sure yet. I'm still checking, double checking, rechecking, exploring more, and feeling more about the scene. So let me continue to do that. It just feels like it's turning into a violent relationship. What was so natural, so right, is starting to become tainted by what is a force of evil <laughs> across a planet feeding into their balanced relationship, which was never, I mean, they were grazing while everybody else is in misery and suffering. And that's somehow feeding into this relationship and it is terrorizing it and it is making it s everything go wrong. I mean, they're screaming at each other. They're, I mean, she's got a phone that she wants to make a call really badly. And it's almost like he could pick up the phone and he wants to hit her in the head and kill her with it. I mean, there's some serious... What? That's crazy. I got to experience some serious romance, seduction, balance, sort of harmony has gone so A-wire. It's like, holy crap. Cremoli, <laughs> and it happened like within me. It just happened very quickly. Things went downhill very quickly. I don't know what to make of this. She's quite good at cleaning up. I mean, she looks very beautiful. She's gorgeous, gorgeous woman. She's crying. It's like she's in a car. What I felt was literally, I thought she had been murdered by him. But I'm not, it's turning into a scene where she's in a car and she's got tears rolling down her cheeks. I feel like she needs her mother right now. She wants to talk to her mother really bad. 
It's like she's being driven somewhere. Everything is shaky. I mean, she's scared for her life. This guy was m far more nuts than we know. It's if he was, d d like, tricked her, you know? He showed her everything. He gave her everything. She fell in love with him. She opened her heart to him in ways like you can't even imagine. Only for it to get seriously sick and twisted. I mean, she is afraid for her life. I'm I'm literally in the car with her and she's she's shaking and she's bawling now. If she was kind of composed and then just kind of, you know, constantly blowing her nose just really nervous feeling and now she's really like rattling and and afraid for her life and she's having like a panic or anxiety attack over this and she's even having a cigarette right now although she can't seem to light it because she's just so jittery i mean she's terror she's just a fear of her life right now i'm talking to her she doesn't even smoke i mean there's something about this she's even just like I, she can't compose herself. It, she doesn't... She's trying. She cannot get her emotions collected. I mean, she... A part of her... What I'm seeing in this car here is she's sort of losing her mind. There's a part of a demonic reflection that is in the inside, completely cut uh, in the center of her. And so some side of her is screaming bloody murder. I mean, her physical appearance is not screaming at all, it's crying. But some spiritual reflection is screaming in chaos, and there's some sort of odd demonic reflection associated with this, which is quite happy or proud of himself, is the way you can describe it. I mean, she's like, it's as if she's going to shit her pants. Like, I can feel her whole body is losing it. Like, there is something so sick and twisted about this scene. I mean, it's becoming demonic. Like, spiritually demonic. I don't know that she feels it, but I do. She's attracting all kinds of d dark reflections here. I'm taking the cigarette out of her hands. I am altering the vibration now. This needs to just stop now. We've done enough seeing. She wants to show me something about that room of the scene with the phone. And all she can do is just say, ah, 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 like that. It's just, she's losing her mind, like. I mean, whatever happened in there was bad. I mean, it's like he was quite nuts. I, they want me to say what I think that it was. Because I kind of saw some images, so I'm just going to say, and then they'll tell me yes or no, or we'll see something else here. This is quite a storyline, I'm telling you. So, he basically... There was quite an argument going on, and she she was not afraid of him and the fact that she could actually go make a phone call in front of him and just be very aggressively talking to him. He puts the fear of God into her, even so much as ripping her hair like this, throwing her on the bed, and telling her that he can do whatever he wants to her, and then does. And I'm telling you, he puts his hand over her mouth and is very forceful with her. And even has like a knife is going to cut her. It's almost as twisted as somebody else is also in the room and takes partakes. I mean, it's as twisted as it just gets really twisted. It really stinks when you have such a freaking love and such a romance that goes so... I mean, who would have thought, you know? That just went downhill bad. Everything is calming now. Everything is relaxing and her f spirit actually feels at peace. She's actually smiling at me and saying I don't need this anymore and puts the cigarettes out the window. 
her she is the strong force that is saying i don't need the demons i don't need the energy i don't in fact she's getting out of the car and she's seeing that it is sunny outside she feels lifted and rejuvenated now she feels free from that she say i've not felt this free in so long i've i I have been so traumatized. This is the only way I can describe it. She's like literally lifting into the sunlight. You're saying, is the sunlight, or is that yellow water, is that sun reflecting on water? It's like, right now the sun is in the sky and everything turning into white clouds, even these buildings and cars, and she is lifting up into literally a yellow ball. And she feels at peace. They're saying she was murdered. You're saying you were murdered in that lifetime. He murdered you. It didn't matter. He could do whatever he wanted. He was a Nazi, all right. They're saying he was a Nazi. That's what they say. You were a treasure because you were so beautiful. And he was attracted to you. And he quite liked to dazzle you with everything he had access to. And you fell for it. And... And his sort of, he has a really, it's almost like he has a mental disorder. He's kind of had a sick, twisted side. And it started to come out more and more. And you were starting to get more and more uncomfortable with it. I mean, it got so bad, it went to a very disturbing scenario here at the end. And then he did kill you. So this scene in the car is just me trying to make sense as I'm talking to your soul fragment, basically. They're saying there were many scenes in cars like this where she started to wonder. She was starting to question if she should leave this guy. Um, but because of everything going on with this, the war and how bad things were, he was all she had. I mean, it was starting to turn out like he was the only light that she had in her life and everything around her was darkness. And she, she, it was, he was it. And so now she's, she just keeps telling herself, you know, you know, he's kind of he's kind of turning strange, but I I don't know what else to do. I don't know where else to go. So she got putting up with it, putting up with it, putting up with it until it gets so bad that it's it's over for her. And then he, he could do whatever he wanted. I mean, this man could murder her and it wouldn't matter. I mean, this man was very high up. I'm examining the scene more. I'm asking if this is all we need to do in order to release. They're saying, is there anything else you feel you need to do with this scene? And I say, well, I want to make sure that his, that her heart, there's something about this because his heart, she fell in love with him. You fell in love with him. You were, you, you were committed to him. You knew that he was, he was like your one. You were captivated by him. You opened your heart, very opened your heart very much so to this man who even was quite, a, his arousal of you was making it very easy for him to fall in love with you. Although he was really just falling in love with your appearance and everything was just based on, he just had a lot of material stuff. He was very high up. He was a reflection of security. He was a man that could take care of her, um, give her whatever she wanted, and then he ends up being kind of a psychopath. And so I'm, I'm saying we need to. I want to make sure that this soul, that that is enough to heal the reaction the heart had towards him, because re that sort of soul connection with him as well, just the whole thing. I just want to make sure. He's dark. They're saying the soul fragment is freed into heaven. Soul fragment is quite peaceful, quite has no relationship or association with the lifetime anymore. Soul fragment feels joy, rejoicing, it feels purified, it feels so happy. And so I'm just, you know what, I'm going to hang out up here and I'm going to fill that, the scenes with just this version of love and harmony. And so we're just spinning them in light and love and transforming them and now everything is disconnecting fully. This is how we're going to do it. All of these reflections are inhaling this heavenly love and letting everything go into the light.
You just want to be you. Part of you really has, you know how to have fun kind of thing. <clears throat> but there's a real genuine softer side that we're working on bringing out of you as well. Because you want it to come out of you. And these lifetimes are really, these two lifetimes are really showing this very unique versions of emotional experiences, you know. And with rela relationships, and feminine emotions, and feminine identities. That lifetime feels so, I mean, the healing of that is so amazing for me to experience right now. That alone is, you're going to feel a lot of peace of mind. You're going to feel a lot of peace of mind and you're going to understand something. It's going to be sort of like, I get it now. I don't know why, I don't know what it is exactly that I get, but you're going to feel a sensation of, of I get it in a way that you could it just you could never have got it in this way until that lifetime was healed, you know? It's one of those things. I hear the song, you know, I drop a bomb on you, baby. Or something like, and then there's a dr bomb coming out of this airplane. It's like, okay, there's more World War II going on here. Or what is this? There's a spinny scene. There's a man doing some seriously awesome dance moves on like a legit floor. I mean, it's like, like... It's like almost like end of the 70s or like early 80s. Or, I mean, people are really into this groove music and they're really into just the dance floor scene, just the sounds and the style and just something very sexy about it. Something very appealing. Something really fun. Something really promotes fun is how this feels. I could just, I could be here all night. <laughs> you just want to see who I'm going to meet here. <laughs> I just want to know. <laughs> I'm going to check out everybody. <laughs> There's something totally fun about this place. I definitely want to hang out here all night. <laughs> I want to see where this goes. I feel super, <laughs> I feel like I make sense here, just because of the excitement. <laughs> They're talking about the illusion of, of love, basically. What, is this really exciting? Is the, is the, I mean, where are, what is the facade in all of this? It's like, who doesn't want to be at that awesome club with the awesome, the way that it's designed, with all the people dressed like crazy, in crazy style, and the dancing, and, you know, all kinds of stuff is going on there. Just drinking, and there's, you know, interactions, like sexual vibes, and sexiness, and it's just... You know it's fun there. It's like, but what is the r real... It's again, it's like looking at the illusion of fun, right? Where is the, the warm, the heart that melts like butter moment in this experience? Where is the nourishment in the drinking and socializing through being mentally handicapped <laughs> and obviously the music is doing a lot of good things and is influencing everything and and the interactions and the drinking is just so it just feels right but now again we're seeing that you know the woman who falls in love with this man but is she falling in love with him or is she falling in love with his security and what he can provide and the materialistic sort of gifts of that relationship I mean, she loved him, but she was also quite excited about this was a really, I mean, she's definitely gorgeous. She could get any guy. And so for the time and place, it was like a real winner for her, right? 
and that really went south. And so now we have this other woman, sort of robust, sort of man, masculine, sort of, you know, vo vo vocal piece. It's just, what is, she is this way because this is how she feels comfortable sharing that side of her identity. So she feels this is the most comfortable version of herself that she could be. We all have many versions of ourselves. So which one is the most comfortable version? And then she is that. Well, deep inside, there's quite a lot more to her than the way she chooses to experience fulfillment in life. It's not for real fulfillment. You know, and now we have this sort of like, I don't know, 80s sort of, I mean, like you, the, the, there's something about the scene that is just totally like the hot spot. Everybody's just getting hammered in all kinds of different ways. And it's very sexual, very, you know, again, it's showing a scene where you're really taken by the physical sort of experience of it. But where is the spiritual depth that if, is where's the fulfillment you know they're talking about the spiritual the heartfelt the real genuine fulfillment of it it's like well dancing is fun and music <laughs> but again they're talking about that so that's the serious side it's like they're right there's a reason i get what they're saying and it's important it is very important because the th reality is here with you, Michelle, is you really want to feel the heart of it all. You want to feel and express your true, deepest, heartfelt side. You want not just to know your own heart, feel your own heart, allow life to... I mean, there's something about the balance here of your heart identity but also intertwined with the real balance of love that comes from the spiritual realm. And so both is telling you the whole, this whole message is so good and is so meaningful. Not just it's going to be meaningful to you, but it's meaningful to all of us because we all need these stories. We all need these versions of wisdom so we can learn about ourselves and about our identities and about truth and and all of that talking about real love I'm I'm to do something here it hasn't come to me yet but it has to do with focusing on your heart portal what is pure spiritual love true love romantic love love that you can trust in love that will not harm you love that will not take advantage of you love that cares about you a love that cares about you on the depths of your deepest parts of you your very deepest most real parts of yourself that can make you feel vulnerable to acknowledge even exist you know but you have to bring those up and out So, I'm going to focus on you. I'm not sure how to do it yet. Should I do it from one of these scenes? Should I do it from a new scene? I just... I'm just sharing what true love, unconditional love, heavenly love feels like. How I experience it is so pure so angelic so heavenly so honest and genuine so i'm channeling this energy into your heart heaven is channeling it through me into your heart is what they want to say as i do that you are down on your knees crying so hard because it is very vulnerable for that part of you to be exposed you're saying because it has been hurt so many times I don't know if that means in this life or just through lifetimes of painful 
relationship experiences that are sort of infiltrating into this experience of today. You have a tear and it's also a jewel. It is the jewel of your sorrow, your infinite sorrow. I'm handing this jewel to a very special angel. It's being set into a sort of a glass bowl that has sort of a dip here. So it's right in that dip. This part of you is turning cold, literally frozen solid. You got a sort of an evil look in your eyes, you're frozen. Something makes you very angry about this. It has to do with trust. This is your most vulnerable side. And so if we... If anything comes from this that ends up bad, you know, that's kind of where this is. It's like... Allow yourself to see that it is heaven here. Allow yourself to trust in heaven. There's a part of you that literally has, it's the destructive force side that is overbearing, overwhelming, and it needs balanced out really badly. And so we're letting it sort of come out, scream. I mean, it comes out in a scream so intensely that there's like a fire vapor. There is shaking walls. There's busting up and breaking. And it's, it's like, please continue to release. Show us your joy of destruction. Bring it all out. You're screaming really loudly, and I'm just here allowing you to just share, because you need to. You're starting to help heal. There's a massive snake just came out of you. That had to go. That one had to go. I mean, it's massive snake. I've never seen one so big. Um... And then clear. It's usually like black energy snake or something. This one looks like a real life snake. It's got black sort of scales all the way up to a green head. And it's got this forked tongue. And it acknowledges that it is no longer within you. Um, I don't know what to do with it. I'm saying, what do we do? It's just hanging out here with us right now. I mean, that really... That really calmed everything down to get that guy out. I mean, he's huge. He's... I don't know how, how big is he. Um, his head is the size of... Uh, I don't know... A couch or something. His body is, is this follow suit in this sort of size. is very long. I just... And I can see each scale perfectly. I'm going to the snake, and because it is still here, some part of your spirit, it's some part of your spirit. I'm growing massive. I'm going into a trance state. channeling pure love in what is a massive orb. I'm like, as tall as the Empire State Building or something. This snake is not very big anymore. <laughs> you are still very small down there next to the snake. Everything is getting full of red vapor. I'm going into like a literally kind of a weird trance state. I'm hearing like a buzzing noise or a sound. I'm inspiring this snake to grow very large like me. I'm helping the snake to grow. 
I'm touching the snake's heart with incredible vibrations of love. I'm helping the snake to know it is time to transform now. It's time to shed the old skin, is what I say. I seem to know what this is about. The snake is not, is, is a part of your soul, is what this is. <laughs> the snake is you. It is not evil, it is not good. It is just, there's, it's neutral, it's, what, it's sort of surprisingly neutral. I am pulling off its old skin and underneath is a different colored snake. It's black. It's got red sort of short lines on it, like spots that are lines. Just on the head. It's thinner. It's sort of silkier looking. It's sort of darker. I feel like I relate to this more. I'm taking you somewhere. It's a giant temple. It's rounded. There's pillars on all the sides. It's just... On the inside, I mean, the ceiling goes up so high. <laughs> and there's pillars. There's like eight pillars or something. It's not hugely wide, it's, but it's big. <laughs> but it's so tall, you know? The stone color is kind of a reddish-orange. And we are in this room. I am pounding my staff into the ground, and like Mother Snake image. And there's electricity coming down and hitting my um, crystal ball. I am creating energy here with you as this sort of black snake. Now I see there's a young girl here. Also an image also with this black snake also here. So. I ask her who she wants to become. As there's something breaking through the ground here. She is shy, she won't tell me, she just looks at me. There's some sort of violent nature, a sort of, you do know who you will become. As I look into her eyes, now I say, speak. She still cannot speak. She's afraid to. Say, do you know you will grow beyond this? Say yes or no. Is what I'm... Or do you feel you will always be this small and this internal about your feelings? I am demanding that it is time now for you to choose and make choices and to allow yourself to know how you feel inside, whether you want to kill the snake today or put your bow and arrow back and just be joyful. Be joyful in the experience and gift of that moment to use your arrow upon the snake or the gift of saying and choosing, it is not for me today. And knowing that both choices were loved all along in your heart. I'm saying, I still don't know how. And now I soften and I say thank you because all you had to do was speak. All you had to do was say something. That's all you got to do is say something. That's it. She feels a lot better. She said I just was scared to talk. I say, well, why were you scared to talk? She's pointing at something. She shows me that there's something much darker here in this world and it's sort of overwhelming her. Even and overwhelming her ability to know how to choose what direction she will go. 
she shows me that we are inside the snake, the mouth of a snake. And I sort of am smiling at her. And I ask, what does that mean to you? She says, it means I feel captured. I say, I'm here with you right now. Are you captured? They say, if I disappear and you are in here alone, now do you feel captured? I'm waiting for her to speak again. So I show her again, so if I am here and we are here together, are you captured? I'm taking her hand and we are walking down the snake's body. And I'm showing, saying, if we are captured, why can we rejoice in exploring the inside of a snake? Shouldn't we be afraid? And we were walking literally down the inside of the snake. It's getting dizzy and overwhelming. This energy is really intense. She says, I don't want to be in here anymore. And I say, so now you're making a choice again. I say, then let's leave here. She says, I'm ready. I say, good, because it is time now for you to be ready. We literally, the snake and body vanish, and we are in this room. I'm here with her. There's a moment of pause. As I'm looking around the room, this black snake is still there. We're exploring the meaning. It is shrinking and there's a bird here. A girl. This girl has turned into a bird. And this snake turns into a worm. <laughs> And now this yellow bird is sort of pecking at this black worm. And the scene is back to where we were. It's sort of <laughs> that odd play doh -y thing with the cave and this sort of fox creature. And they're playing with each other is what I hear. It's like, that bird is going to eat that worm right up and there's nothing playful about it. <laughs> they're insisting again that that bird w is playing with the worm. <laughs> say, okay, then that's what we're going with. I'm relaxing and being patient. I blow onto a stem and create a flower of flame. I am a female and I am smiling at my creative nature. I think this is the most beautiful flower. It is made out of fire itself and sits upon a physical stem without it burning. They show me the flame evaporates and now it materializes into a yellow flower. I feel in control of the elements themselves. I feel like I know about creation. I feel like I know the balance of all things in nature. The balance of heaven, the balance of hell, the balance of, of all things in nature, chaos and love, and creation and destruction. And that is what I mean when I say this. You get to decide what hell means to you, what heaven means to you. It is chaos or there's love, and there's creation in both, and destruction is quite a form of chaos, right? But love, too, can also be destructive. Oh, so relaxing. I'm trying to just define what I mean by that, but I can't. <laughs> All I'm going to say is thunder and lightning are beautiful things.
You can be scared of them or you can rejoice in them. So which one is chaos and which one is love? It is your choice. This woman is beautiful and she's insanely balanced. She knows. She's so balanced. She's as balanced as a tree just knows. Uh, the ducks just, I, I mean, there's something insanely, like, she understands the vibration of creation itself, the vibration of, of infinite time, the vibration of who and what she is as a physical reflection or an infinite spiritual reflection. She knows divine timing of why things happen when they do, and, I mean, it's beautiful, it's incredible. She can change the flower's color to anything she wants and any texture. She shows that she can create flame. It can turn into soft flower petals and even turn into sort of a metallic flower. Something odd about her demeanor because she's softly... Her creative style is... It's sort of... There is something dark about it, only in that she loves the power that she has to create. To use, to sort of harness energy itself and create whatever she wants. And she could be very bad if she wants to be, or very good if she wants to be. She can be either or. And I say, well, who do you want to be? She's got a definitely a reflection of she splits and she's both is what she wants to be shows me a sort of chaos is she can split her reflect I mean she basically I see a beautiful scene okay with a beautiful woman she's in sort of white but she has her hair and like a beautiful braid blonde braid like this and then just it just goes around like this and then it's all pulled up she has no hanging hair at all. She's quite, she's beautiful, she's lovely. She's extraordinary, obviously extraordinary. So as I look at her, she also sort of bends in two ways. And as she bends, she shows me a rainbow mirage of color and it's metallic and rainbow on the inside of her literally bending in half and showing me on the inside of hers all of this color. I mean, she can bend space and time. She can bend the fabric of reality. That's what she's like. She shows me that she can... So she, as she bends above, she sort of at the waist now, she bends out here too. And, and it's like an hourglass. And on the inside is like a metallic sort of energy. And, and then rainbowy kind of too. And so I'm just watching. She can be thin and invisible even. I ask her about these lifetimes and I ask her what that means to her. I sort of am saying, so you can create, you can bend things, but what about a life here on earth? What about the pain and suffering that that woman from World War II endured? What do you know about that? What about this woman who's this deep part of her that's never come out before? What do you know about those experiences? There's just a pause and we're communicating without speaking, I guess. I, there's definitely communication here, but nothing is being said at this time. So I'm just waiting. And tell her that what impresses me is the human experience where nothing is known of these magical qualities. All that is known is a heart that chooses to love or fear sharing love. And those become the most extraordinary, most painful experiences. 
beyond any measure. And that is the magic of the experience, figuring out how to override this. You, this sort of gift of hers is just, it's part of what she, is her nature. She did not have to try to uncover this stuff. She did not have to try to learn how to do any of these things. They're just part of her. And so these other experiences, these raw earth lifetimes, deserve so much reverence and so much respect over anything else. So I'm asking her again about this. I ask her what then is deep down inside of her heart. Are you just trying to show me more of this surface dazzle? Or is there something more meaningful deep inside of you? I am filling her heart with true love from heaven. So she can know what real love feels like. Love that is deep and meaningful and is not about surface layer tricks of that could dazzle anybody, but what is the real depth? Where is the real meaning here? I'm sharing her with her heart the memories of these lifetimes. That is what chaos provides. This imbalanced inability to experience love that you can trust in. Love that m brings out the deepest parts of you. Now I'm showing her what love is that heals. This tear, this gem, is being shared with this reflection of you. There's definitely a need to create a reharmonization of that reflection because it again follows suit with the same facade, you know, of where is the true depth? So, I am sharing that tear that turned into a sort of dazzling stone, and I'm sharing it with her. It's all jarring, all right, for her. I've been focusing all kinds of energy on her, and she does not alter her style, but this is altering her style. She is, she is breaking apart now because this is true feelings and emotions. She, so she can understand
It's helping her to feel something real in her heart that she has not felt. This is really important for you. She can feel this in her heart. It's like a tiny little speck or like a tiny spark of light that was never there before. And now it is there and now she's she is exploring her identity differently. She can feel it. It's kind of like a tiny little cigarette ash sort of fell into her body. But it didn't hurt. It doesn't put a hole in you. But it's enough that you notice that like, ooh, I feel something. You know, there's something. She needs to feel something in her heart that isn't, oh, look at me and what I can do. It's real true experience. <laughs> real true depth. She is totally, it is totally changing her. And I'm just waiting patiently to find out what happens from this. Has it not manifested yet? It is manifesting, though. I see something definitely changing here. What can only be described as like a huge, sort of a, a dark tree here and a dark scene. And the tree has sort of like octopus arms, but they're very thick like branches. So there's no, there's no, it's not like your average tree. It's sort of solid stock here, but then it has these octopus branches that are sort of waving out. And there's many of them. There's no leaves or anything. And it's a dark sky. It's a sort of dark blues and purples in this scene. I hear the words charming, like we are walking to this tree, which we call our home or something. There's a woman here who's got some diamond reflection to her. She's got perfect hair. I mean, she's like some sort of blonde. I mean, she's sort of like, what do they call her? Lady Galadria from, you know, Lord of the Rings and... She's kind of beautiful, really long blonde hair. It's pulled back. It's just ridiculously long and thick and very, she's just very beautiful, very feminine. And she's walking slowly up to this dark tree and she's got something made out of gold here and some sort of piece up there as well. It's just something about this is important about her reflection and who and what she is. They ask me if I know who and what she is, and I say, well, I'm still learning her right now. I don't know whether I am thrilled about her or not thrilled. I don't know how I feel about her right now. I just see her. This is what she looks like. She has quite a piece. She definitely chooses to create the reflection of being very wise or heavenly, but I'm not convinced yet about her yet she's opening a secret door entering into the tree we are going down very far beneath the tree's roots this place is sort of fiery i'm breathing fire i feel invisible here yet this is everything happening simultaneously as I'm going down an elevator shaft through a tree trunk going downward to a space that is on sort of lit up like red, like is on fire, and there's darkness here too. I'm invisible. I don't know what any of this means. There's quite a man down here. Very tall. Something ferocious like a big black lion with roar, a big loud roar. Massive. It's just like a giant lion. But yet there's also something about a giant man down here too. I like this space more than I liked the blonde woman. <laughs> there's something about real depth and truth to what you are seeing or feeling like what is the where's the raw 
and real truth. If that truth happens to be a dark chaos realm, at least it is what it is, you know? But if the truth just happens to be an attractive blonde woman that just is wearing the costume, but she has no real depth under the a facade, then I'm not real thrilled about her, you know what I mean? Like, there's something I love more about this reflection than I did with anything else. And I quite like the tree, by the way. I thought the tree was really cool. <laughs> I'm just, I'm literally looking upward. <laughs> These massive people trying to make sense. Everything just feels like it's, it's turning to stone. It just feels like this space needed to be acknowledged. It needs transformed, all right. This has been sitting here for a little while. I'm doing some work here to change the truth of what this is about. We keep the meaning, but we change, we don't want, we want to see things growing. <laughs> we don't want to see Bernie scenes. Those are, those are sort of part of your infinite mirror that you want, you, you want more light and more love and more higher vibrations in your life. And so we need to kind of wash out the sort of negative, more negative ones, and purify those reflections. And so that way you are experiencing more balance and harmony and more heavenly experiences. And even if the heavenly experience is the thunder and the lightning, it's balanced, right? It's not the the grosser sort of something I like about this place, but it's not, it needs healed. It's something needs healed here too. It's a loud voice. Very loud and demanding. I'm sitting on the sort of shoulder of a man who's like an Egyptian, but he doesn't quite, his headdress is Egyptian, he looks, he's got, his face is sort of sunken and then sort of curved just a little bit, and then with this sort of chin piece, and then his hair is just black, sort of dark color, but he has this sort of headpiece on. I mean, I can see his face clearly. He's an older man, all right. He's 50s, I'd say. He's tan. I'm sitting on his shoulder, <laughs> a little person. He's sort of annoyed about life for some reason. He's, it's like, why are you annoyed? I mean, you're, you clearly have it made. What could you possibly be annoyed by? It's almost like life does not entice him for some reason. He really likes cats, though. He likes cats of different kind of furs. He loves animal furs, specifically cat ones, cat furs. All different kinds of cat furs, like tigers or cheetahs. or He really likes them. He's fascinated by the different qualities of, you know, just the coloring on them and stuff. He really likes cats a lot, like, in love with them. <laughs> He's, like, real genuinely loves cats. Big cats. Cats with big, sharp teeth, too. There's an image of a giant insect, and this man is very small now, like an inch tall. So, like, the insect is the size of a human being, and the man is now the size of the insect. The insect takes some very long, sharp fingers and picks the man up and throws him into a fire. The man screams. The insect doesn't care, because the insect is bigger than he is. <laughs> doesn't care that he's just like, ew. But he has no re sensation. He just sees the man and is just get throw the man out of my way. 
He has no regard for human life. He just likes furs. <laughs> this man. He doesn't even really have... I don't get his sexual nature because there's... He could have any woman, but he just... He does not care about the same things that a normal human being... Like, his caring or his needs are different. I mean, he likes material things, material possessions, and he's fascinated by cats. He just is not... He has a Bernie nature about him, and he would not care if somebody were murdered in front of them by his own choice. If he doesn't want you, you you can just die and he will not care, because all he cares about is cats. But he's very real about what he cares about. He's very much so. This means a lot to him. His, his business, his... Um, because it's sort of like... He, he's a really impressive trader or something like that, and he really likes really fine possessions, very fine possessions. And he's almost like psychotically in love with his material objects, and just does not have a heartbeat for human life. He doesn't know how to feel or care about another human being. He just doesn't know how to. He literally doesn't know how to. He doesn't... He, and he doesn't, some, I mean, he's like an, got an evil nature that, that prevents the heart from having real feelings. He likes being seen as very high wealth. That means more to him than another human being. I'm just wondering, what has he shared with the world that was really valuable other than things? What were his thoughts related to? What was his conversations like? That's what I'm curious about. You're saying, so do you think he... It's showing me that he has a heartbeat, but... We're interacting about this question. They show him sitting on a sort of a... a he's sitting up high and looking across a horizon. And he is just looking across the horizon. It's all flat. It's sort of desert out here where he is. And he's up high. Like, almost like he's looking from... He's not looking from a palace, but he's up at a high perch where he can look across. And all you see is sort of the... Sort of a desert scene and then sun. He claps his hands and a man comes. And brings him some some sort of food or water or something. He has no... He, this is his... He deserves this. This is his chosen post. By God, it's, you know, this like... I, I was, or, you know, this is my divine calling to be who and what I am and for you to be my servant. And if I want you dead, that is also God wanting you dead. That is his... Where he comes from. That is his understanding of love. He was chosen for this role by heaven, and thus he is heaven's voice, and if he wants a man murdered or whatever, then that is heaven wanting it done. So that is how he understands love and his relationship with reality in his life. They're asking me if I think he dies and goes to heaven. I'm saying, what does he believe? Is he... They're asking me if I think... They're showing me a hypothetical scenario. I know we're getting short on time here, but they're showing me a scenario. The scenario where this man who has the power of heaven to choose the death of others, now a human being who would not, who's not him, does not have the power of heaven, chooses to kill him. So what, what, is, what can we make of his truth and his power and his reign and his value and his importance? When now his power was all a part of his own illusion. His own illusion. His complete illusion. 
They're saying you've come a very long way from that life, from that man, and you have so much to be proud of. You are not that man at all anymore. You're not. They're saying you are full of love, and now let the love come out of you and touch other people's lives. Let yourself feel other people now. Know that the lifetime is over. Know that it is not who and what you are today. And just be proud of who and what you are. That's what they're saying. They're showing me this whole scene is just dust blowing in the wind. That's what they're saying. So where is the real value of all these experiences and all these reflections and all these moments? Where's the value in it? Value is following following the nature of true love from deep within your heart and allow that to show you the right perception about the world around you, about the way you can choose to feel joy in your life, the way you can choose to experience other human beings in your life too, and have real valuable, meaningful, heartfelt relationships with others. I'm saying you can do this. <laughs> you are doing this. You're doing amazing at doing this. That's what they're saying. And we love you all the time. That's what they say. We love you all the time. So, you just... There's smiles from each one of these scenes. Every part of you and every one of these scenes from the beginning you know, the little girl, like every scene. So you and the shackles are you breaking down the scene and choosing to take, you know, take that every scene as a woman who is smiling. This man, I mean, the young girl, the, I mean, this man is just dust blowing the wind at this point, but they're just showing me that love and pure love. And checking on this other the woman who finally experienced feeling. All these spaces are just merging together. They're just merging together as sort of just one massive orb of wisdom that is just being lifted and rinsed with heavenly light. Heavenly love that then creates the light. They're saying you are being lifted and rinsed and purified with heavenly love that creates light. And you will feel it rumble through your body in this lifetime. This healing is going to make a very real impact on your life, they say. All right, <laughs> so Michelle, that is the end of your soul rebirth journey. It's quite fascinating. <laughs> Thank you for that really amazing experience. So um, I'm just kind of out of it right now. <laughs> so I just want to thank you for that and thank you for your willingness to share this openly on YouTube for all of us to learn and experience your soul. And for those of you watching, if you would like to experience a soul rebirth journey with me, you may do so by visiting my website at abbynormalswisdomquest.com. Thank you for watching.